To Abago, we are committing the journey of everyone that is moving over to Abago, even the ones that are not in our company. But we pray that you grant everyone mercy journey in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, you take control of all that will be happening there. We hand over everything to you in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray.
Good morning, Ma. What's your name? My name is Prophetess Umeka Naya. Yeah. I read from Mosuari. I know that you are one of the directors. Yes. What do you have to tell us about the late father that is late? My father is a great man. One thing I love about him and about the way he brought us up. He's not a very rich man, but he's not a poor man. He's a man of dignity and integrity. He's a man that is contented with what he has. He's not a dependent of anybody. He likes what he has. And he's, he's, he's okay. He has a lot of classmates. People like Let Cairo Jubo, great men, big men, politicians. He doesn't go to them, he doesn't go to anybody, he always beg. And he did not tell us how to beg. He's very contented. He was a teacher, a great one in mathematics. As a matter of fact, my best subject is mathematics. So he's my teacher, he's my father, he's my advisor. He's very dear to me, he's very close to me. Even when my younger ones try to bully him, sometimes I help him out. And when he said, my daughter, borrow me money, when he bring the money back, I said, daddy, no. Daughter cannot borrow his father money. You can't give me back that money. He's a wonderful man. But these last days, he left without a word, which is really hurting me up to now. He's a wonderful man. He has lived a good life. So he's father to so many. He's a chairman of all chairmen, he's a, he's a counselor, he's a very nice man, he's very calm, he's easy going, he doesn't make trouble, he has never hit enough as his children, he only conscious us, he doesn't beat, it's just, I, I can go on and on, but there's no time, so my father yeah. is a great man, yeah. who forever makes him, and he will forever remain in my heart. As though that they, they will meet and part no more. Thank you very much, ma. What's your name once again? My name is Prophetess Mecca Naya. Why? God bless you. Good afternoon. Yeah, what's your name? My name is uh, Iguma Benedicta. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what do you know about the dead one, uh, this papa that is here? Oh, at least he's my man. uncle. My father died, he stood for us as a father, and he has been a nice person. Ever since my father died, he didn't make us feel that we don't have a father anymore. He's a nice person, a very kind man. Indeed, he's a father. Yeah, I'm saying this is the uh, most worry grant to this place, crying and doing what thing at the other end. I see that, uh, yes, you are so close to, to him. That those people that there are many people coming now, now the many follow. What do you have for them? And those ones that came to give the occasion. Um, first of all, I really want to appreciate everyone who came to praise the occasion of our late father. Yeah. I really appreciate them, and I pray God give them grace, strength, and Johnny Mercy back home. I really want to tell them thank you for all their contributions, their time, financial support and much more. I really want to appreciate them. Thank you very much. Ma. What do you have for the biological world? Yeah, now my cousins. My cousins, the only thing I have for them is just for 
everyone because it's, it's not just only them we give birth to. They are my first cousins and I want to encourage them. When I lost my dad, I thought all hope was lost. But later I got to find out that with God, when you have faith, when you are bold, be consistent and be prayerful, you overcome. So all I need for them is just for them to have that love, oneness. When they have unity, they can conquer all. Thank you. Thank you. What, what, what was your name? My name is Benedicta Iguma. God bless you, Mondo. Wait for some time now, wasting time. I wouldn't call it waste of time. Putting this in order. So we are starting immediately. And to take us the opening prayer, I want to call Pastor Ima. Please. Wherever he is, he should walk up quickly to take us the opening prayer. Let's turn to our feet. And please, if you are a man, pull up a cup to honor God. Glory be to God in the highest, amen. Honor be to God in the highest, amen. For his mercies endure it forever, amen. For his mercies endure it forever. Amen. In Jesus' name, we exalt you and we adore you. Thank you, the King of Glory, for the free gift of life that you have given us to again today. Father, please take all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Father and our God in heaven. Lord, today, Let's open. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you for the Almighty, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, the King of Glory, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Pray that you will be there in Jesus' name. Oh, Amen. Amen. so if your name is not there now, please, before we leave this place, make sure that your name is in that list. Praise the Lord. 
And for your name to enter that list, it's just for you to surrender to Jesus. Confess your sin before him and tell him to take charge of your life. Praise the Lord. We are already in item number seven, scripture reading. I want to call one of the children of our late father, Mr. Wanchuku, to come and help us take that Bible reading. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 to 15. And it says, Then I saw a great white throne, and he who sat on it, from whom faith and the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Twelve. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the book were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works. By the things which were written in the book. Thirteen. The sea, the sea, the sea gave up the dead who were in it. And the dead had those deliverer up the dead who were in them and they were judged each one according to his works 14 and the dead and the dead and the and Hades were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death 15 and everyone not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire this is the word of the Lord. Put a very deep concern in my heart. Books were opened. And another book was opened. And the Bible says that and whosoever was not found written in the book. I still want to ask. Have you have your name? I don't know. I still want to beg you. If your name is not there now, before we leave here, please make sure you meet with Jesus for him to write your name there. Praise the Lord. Item number eight, the tribal, that is the biography of our daddy. We want to call Mrs. Sandra to help us take that. Please, wherever she's seated. Biography of my father. Mr. Idiomudia Fidelis Jebefume was born into the family of Ikuma in March 7, 1950, in Abafo Central, a castle local government area, Delta State. He attended the primary school and secondary school education in Abafo. He went to Awochi Polytechnic, where he studied mathematics and successfully completed his studies. He carried out his NYC program. Yeah. He carried out NYC program here in Delta State where he met his lovely wife, Mrs. Nkeki Victoria. Mr. Idiomudia Fidelis Jebefume was an industrial man who did several businesses before he got a civil job as a teacher. He started teaching on 1st of July in the year 1977 with TTC2. And he retired on that year, July 2020, 2020, 2012, making it 35 years. After he retired, he did not stop working. He kept fighting for he keep fighting for work just to make just to meet up and provide for his lovely wife and children. Mr. Fidelis, Mr. Ede Mudia Fidelis was a devoted Christian as a member of Christ Vineyard, Christ Vineyard Evangelist Ministry, where he was made the most elderly man in most elder in his church. He was very committed to the things of God. Mr. Idea Muda Fidel Jebefume was called so soon to his entirety on February 4th, 2024. He was he survived by his wife, children, grandchildren, brothers and sisters, uncle, ETC, 
May his soul rest in peace. Tribute to my beloved daddy. Who see my father? Help me tell him that I love him so much. I have to say, it's hard to say, R.I.P. Daddy. You are the best thing to, you are the best thing that ever happens to me. You were the first person I know as my father. You were the one who taught me how to use bad and how to manage my period. You were still the one that made you are still the one that made my two breasts equal. My my friend thought my friend thought that I was the only one you had. My friend thought that uh, my friend thought that I was the only one you had. Reason because you were because your call you called me always and check up on me often. People think the father cannot make up their children's need, but they were all wrong. But in my own case, you made everything beautiful for me. You were my friend, my best friend, my chasing partner, my gossip mate, my future planner. I may not be able to give you everything you wanted, but you know, I promise to give you everything that can make you happy. And I, everything that can make you happy. And I feel loved again. No matter how many times we fight, quarry, argue, but you never stop loving me or stop hearing my words. I believe I have made you proud in my own way. And I will keep, and I will still keep to the world you used to tell me. Everybody says you are kind, quiet, and lovely person. Yes, I know. And I believe them. But one thing you have taught me on how to let things go and forgive another. But I have, but I, I should try to carry family along and how to love everyone around me. You made me to understand that there is no purpose for there's purpose for everything. Every one who comes into your life. Some came into your life to test you. Some came to teach you. Some came to use you. Some to bring out the best in you. But I have come to realize it is true. Daddy of all children. I will forever miss you, Daddy. I will choose you over and over again in my life. Even without thoughts and without a doubt in my heart. Daddy, please never forget to know how much you mean to me. You are all in my heart. It is really painful to me seeing you dying in my presence. And the memories in it, I can never forget. R.O.I.P. I have to say it. But what to do? R.O.I.P. Hard to think of what will happen. Amen. Oh, somebody is walking up to come and take her own.
make my father have sense. You play the role of a father and a grandfather. I am grateful for that. My birthday partner. We are both Pisces. I know you are in a better place where there is no hardship, no suffering, no sadness, no sickness. Again, heaven, again, actional angel added in heaven. Even if I search the entire universe, I am sure I will never find a grandpa who is, who is as loving and caring as you are. Rest in peace, grandpa, from your beloved best granddaughter. And that will be taken by Mommy Gio of Christ Vineyard Evangelical Mission. Our father used to be very close to him, very humble man. Mommy Gio, you are welcome now. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Not easy to forget. Fidelis, Jebefu Men, joined Christ Vineyard Evangelical Mission in the year 2014. His presence as the most elderly man in the church added value to the church. He was committed to the growth of the church and served the church in various capacities. As a member of the church committee, marriage committee, and thanksgiving committee. He played a advisory role in certain matters that required knowledge in education, tradition, and religion. He also provided useful hints in relation to marriages, a devout Christian and lover of children. Of all the children in the church miss you dearly for the biscuit and bobo you buy for them during the children's week. The entire church miss you for your humorous nature and funny jokes you throw in to East Tension when handling difficult matters. You left us unceremoniously without a word of goodbye. But we are rest assured that we shall see you when the role is called up yonder. When the dead in Christ shall rise from the dead, rise on, rest on, Fidelis, rest on, Papa, as you are fondly called by the children, rest on, Prince of Abago Kingdom. Dead. Members of Christ Vineyard Evangelical Mission, take heart. God will raise another pen that will be buying bobo for the children. Don't believe that? More bobo will come. More bobo will come. Children, more bobo will come in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I want to call on the choir to give us their peace before we hear the word of God. Choir. When the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise again. As you listen, amen. Bless in Jesus' name. When the trumpet she sound, the dead in Christ to rise again. We that are living, we be caught off in a moment to meet the Lord in the air with a host of his angels who sing hallelujah on the day when the trumpet. Oh, the dead in Christ will rise again. And we that are living, we be caught off in a moment. To me, the Lord in the air, with the host of his angels, we sing hallelujah on the day. Stop that. 
said that we will be among those that will shout that hallelujah. Please, we have gotten to a, a very serious moment where the Lord himself will be speaking to us through his word. Please, I want us to take this time very seriously so that this time will be meaningful to you. We want to take exhortation from the word of God and to take us on that is our father, the general overseer of Christ Zayah Evangelical Mission. He is the vision bearer. He's the one that God has commissioned this work to. Please join me as I welcome to the microphone, Pastor F. Y. Please clap your hand for Jesus. We are not excited. Before we pray, I want to formally welcome everybody to this uh, burial ceremony. And I want to apologize to everyone for the delay. Um, something happened that many people do not know and it's not within my power to tell them. I just have to get them to move that thing here. So bear with us. In no distant time will be true. Let's stand up and pray. Let's stand up and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, life and death is in your hand. You are the one that creates and at appointed time you call individuals home. We thank you because of our brother, the life he lived. We thank you because before he departed, you were aware. It's not by accident. And we thank you for everything he contributed to his family, his community, and to the church and our nation at large. We say to you, be glorified in Jesus' name. And Lord, today we are here to lay him to rest and we want to share your word. We want to share the word to the church. You will always come up with the Bible and jot and jot him down. He's not here now. We still bless your name for everything. 89. There is a question that we are going to answer. But before I will ask that question, I want to lead you into something. When I was very young, then I think when the secondary school, my father was always sharing with us the life of Chief Awolowo and Azikiwe. And the way he tell us, he made us to believe that they were supernatural human beings. My father categorically told me that he did not believe that Dr. Azikiwe would one day die. I wondered why. And he said to me that the Babbage River in, in Lagos, that the king the white men used to lock up the river so that it would not overflow. He's dead. Ah. I wonder then there was no phone. So when we had a holiday, I came home. My father was still alive. And I asked him, I said, have you heard that Azikiwe is dead? Ah. He said, here. Praise God. Praise God. I have told you this story because of what I want to share with us. Of the grave, praise God. This is a question that I want us to answer. The reason is this. We are in a time where we are living our life as if we have no creator. 
We are in a time where people live their life carelessly, not counting their days on earth. We are in a time where people live and believing that they are going to remain here forever. We are in a time where people live, all they live for is to acquire the things of this world. A lot of people have forgotten their creator. A lot of people have forgotten that one day a call will come. And when that call comes, that nothing can resist you from re receiving that call. And when you receive that call, that is the end of your journey here. And most people do not find out when is this going to be. Unfortunately, many do not know what that Easter means. All we know is that time for rest is come. Time for rest, time to eat, time to attend parties, time to drink is come. And so we celebrate it every year. And it has been so for many years. We don't ask questions. The question the Bible, the word of God is asking you and I. Who is that man that we live? And we not die. Eight years. Personally, I know not. And if God has made it so, for you and I to know the number of years we are to spend on eight years, maybe we would have been more careful. But unfortunately, God did not make it so. Praise God. I am asking this question. Who is that man? That we live on earth here, that we not die. I was born and bred up in Benin. Now listen, when we were very young, as we are burying Papa today, in those days they will carry the trophy on their head and be dancing and dancing, and we will be following them, dancing with them. And then you see the family members asking questions. Well, now, Rebena, who, where we are? That is to say, you that is watching us as we are dancing for the dead, will you not die? That you are living here on earth, there is a purpose and there is a time for it. There are a number of days and years you have on earth here. No matter what you are, no matter your position, no matter where you come from, no matter who you are called, it's within. But one thing I want to say about him is this. He was a man. He loved God. He was always there for us. Now, look at it. One thing that I loved him for was this. Anytime, anywhere, even when we have burial marriage to attend, he knows that they will preach him there. He will always go there with his daughter and Byron. In the church, he will be jotting down. If you go to his house, maybe that Sunday evening, a few days time, you will see him revising what he received. That was what endeared me to him. Because I know that so many don't do that again today. Many that go to church don't do that again. They don't have time. But we have time for merriment. We have time for pleasures. We have time for everything. But we don't have time for God. Will you not die one day? Why I am asking this question? Is this the Bible says in the book of Hebrew 9:27 that once it's appointed unto man to die and thereafter judgment. Now listen, human beings, this is where we put it. We know said death, not death, all of us.
us owe the debt. All of us go die. All of us owe the debt. That is a common language that comes from men, that comes from women, that comes from average human beings, that comes from kings, that comes from princes and princesses, that comes from politicians, that comes from all class of people. Now listen. Yes, we owe the debt. They stop there. They do not care whether the Bible went on to say that after that judgment, nobody talks about that. Nobody thinks about that. Nobody thinks about this judgment. The judgment is coming one day. My brother, my sisters, as you are so sure that one day death will come, be so sure again that judgment will come. On this earth, remember that that day is coming. And when it comes, what are we going to tell our God? We are not going to stand before I next chairman. We are not going to stand before the Supreme Court judge that you can say I am this, I am that so favor me it's not going to be like that everybody will be judged according to their works what is your works on earth here what are you doing with your life stop thinking that friends will laugh at you stop thinking is my pastor. Our bishop is my pastor. I go to so 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 church. Keep quiet and hear the word of the Lord. No archbishop, no bishop, no pastor can save your soul. That is your decision to make. It doesn't matter the church you attend. Pay your tithe one more million every day to the church if you are not born again. We are still going to hell. You are still going to hell. Tide does not save nobody. I didn't say you should not pay your tide, but I am saying when you pay your tide, you must be saved. You must be saved. Stop wasting pastors' days waiting. Make we stand and go pray. And why very you hear people say bye-bye? But let me tell you this. Only in what God has ordained. The spirit returns back to God. Then the body will go back to the earth. I will explain why. As we are waiting to lay Papa to the ground, we are only putting that dust, the dust that was taken from the edge to create him, back to the owner. Because from the edge, God took the soil to create him, to make him. So when he dies, God does not need what is in this casket is of no value to God. This thing you are seeing here, even if you bought this casket with 10 million, time might come here next week. Time might is already eating it. Now listen. When we return him to back, back to the earth, we are done with the natural thing. But here this. The spirit is the one that goes back to God. Ah, Now today we go tell them bye-bye. That bye-bye we are doing is to this casket and the 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 the, the soil that is in that casket. The the reading is gone. That same day, that same hour, that same minute. That same minute, that same hour, 
that he beat. Oh, that is the final. The spirit is gone back to God. That is what matters to God. So what we are doing here is just ceremony. And it is the spirit that we bear witness. It is the spirit that we give account. Not this one. So when we are preparing for my, I mean barrier, it looks as if we are preparing the person to go to heaven. Did you remember Lazarus? Lazarus was not given barrier, no ceremony. He died the way he lived his life, died with his sickness, but he was in tune with God. When he died, the Bible said, he was taken to the, what do you call it? Abraham's bosom. Where will you be when you die? Where will I be when I die? I have heard some preachers say, don't pray to be like Lazarus. Because Lazarus was poor. That was why he went to Abraham's bosom. That if he was rich on eight years, he would have been, he would have had his bosom. And people will be laughing and clapping hands. I want to be rich. Why did the rich man not make it? Praise God. I say praise God. Man, it will not fall to the ground. I thank you for them that have risen their hand up. And I pray God of heaven and earth. Have mercy on them and forgive them their sins in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you forgive them, Father, write their name in the book of life. And give them the power to serve you on the days of your life. And Lord, I pray for everyone that is seated here. I know that the enemies of man, the soul of man, we put shame in our heart to say, why will you get up? I pray earnestly for everyone that is here. You and I know the heart of people. There are people who refuse to raise up their hand. Father, I ask that you forgive them as well in the name of Jesus Christ. And write their names in the book of life in Jesus' name. And Lord God Almighty, every other person that is saying, I don't need Jesus, Father, I swear, commit them into your hands. Give them an encounter. Give them an encounter that we make them, when they come out from that encounter, they will be the one to tell the whole world that Christ encountered with them and that they have given their life to Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to minister to them even as we live here in the name of Jesus Christ. Those of them that must be born again here today, trouble them as they go home. In their kitchen, in their palace, in their bedroom, everywhere, begin to ring this word. Be born again into their heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them not escape it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. So, what to call Pastor? One of our fifty ministers, Pastor Stephen Williams, oh, to pray for the family. Would you please? Hallelujah. Please, we are coming to that quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we lift up this entire family to your mighty hands. We ask, O oh God, that you console them. We ask, O oh God, that you comfort them. We pray, the Heavenly Father, that the soul have gone, that have gone to be with the Lord, will rest in peace in the name of Jesus. And we pray that every members of the family, none of them will be lost in the name of Jesus. Right? Yeah. Those that are here to make up their mind, Father, touch them, reach out unto them, O oh God, so that they will not be mixing on that day in the name of Jesus. Right? Prayer minutes. Guide everyone, protect everyone, preserve everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And amen. And now, uh, we have to be from out in service. At Please, for space sake.
the pastor and the family members only will be going with us to the gravesite, please.
When the dead and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud. Then shall come to pass the thing that is written, O oh, death, be swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Hallelujah. For as much as the spirit of our dead brother, Mr. Uh, has returned to God who gave it to therefore commit his body earth to earth dust to dust ash to ash in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good